Hello class, Professor Anderson here. Uh, let's talk a little bit about uh, elasticity of objects. Um, as we know, everything, in fact, bends a little bit. Okay, so even if you take a steel rod and you apply a force to that steel rod, you pull on the end of it, it actually stretches out a little bit. Okay, not very much but it does stretch out a small amount delta x. Why is that? Well, let's think a little bit about the internal structure of a steel rod. Okay, what's in a steel rod? It's made of atoms and molecules, of course, and those atoms and molecules are held together by electromagnetic forces. Now, if I take two atoms and I try to pull them apart, they have a restoring force to pull them back together thanks to the electromagnetic force. And that means that it acts like a spring, okay? Even a steel rod will act just like a spring. And in fact, a spring is nothing more than a steel rod coiled up into a helix. And so when you bend a spring, you're in fact bending the steel rod. All right, so how do we describe elasticity? Well, in this case, we're talking about a stretching of the object, and that is governed by something called Young's modulus. It's written with a capital Y, and Young's modulus is the stress divided by the strain. The stress is what you apply. How hard are you pulling on this thing? The strain is how far does it move? How much does it stretch out? So if we think about this steel rod for a second, let's give it some parameters. We're gonna say that we're gonna pull on it with a force F. We're gonna say that it started with a length L initial. And we also have to think a little bit about how big that steel rod is, right? How thick is it? How wide is it? So we give it a cross-sectional area A, okay? This is an area, not just a diameter of the, um, of the rod. All right, so what is stress? Stress is pressure. And we know exactly what pressure is. Pressure is how much force you apply divided by the cross-sectional area of that object. Okay, and we pull on it with F, it has cross-sectional area A. This is the stress that we induce on it. What is the strain? The strain is how much does it stretch? That is given by delta X over its initial length, okay? If it's 10 meters and it stretches by one meter, then that would be a 10% strain. Now, for a steel rod, it's not really gonna stretch that far. It's gonna be a very small amount, but you can in fact calculate it from this equation right here. So, let's see if we can calculate this for a real uh, problem, a real example. Okay, so let's take a look at a problem of uh, compression of objects. And in this problem, we're gonna look at the wooden legs that are supporting an aquarium. So here we have uh, an aquarium and we put some volume of water in the aquarium. And supporting the aquarium are these wooden uh, legs, square legs. And as you increase the amount of water in the aquarium, it pushes down harder and harder on those legs and they compress a little bit. So let's see if we can figure out how to calculate how far those legs will actually compress. And let's say that we have the following numbers. We put a volume of water in there of three times 10 to the four liters. Uh, the legs are made of dug fur and they have an initial length of 80 centimeters, so 0.8 meters. And let's also say that they are square legs, 5.4 centimeters on a side, 
which gives them an area of that. Okay, and now let's see if we can find how far those things compress. Compress. How far do they shrink? All right, we know that Young's modulus governs length contractions or expansions, and so we can use Young's modulus equation, which we said was force divided by area all over delta x divided by li. And now we just want to solve this equation for delta x. Okay, Young's modulus, that y, is a particular number for a given substance. So steel has one particular value for Young's modulus. Doug Fur has a different value for Young's modulus. So let's, let's solve this equation for delta x. All right, so we can multiply across. We get delta x over li times y equals f over a. Now we divide by y, we multiply by li, and we get the following. Delta x is equal to f times li divided by y times a. All right, what is f? f is how hard is the water pushing down on those posts? Well, that's just the weight of the water. So that becomes mg times li, all divided by y times a. And we don't really know the mass yet, but we do know the volume of the water. Okay, so we should be able to calculate the mass. Let's see how to do that. Okay, so we need to calculate the mass of the water that's in that aquarium. And what we remember is mass is equal to rho times volume. Now, the density of water, we know it's a thousand kilograms per cubic meter. The volume of the water in the tank, we told you it's three times 10 to the four liters, but we don't know how many liters are in a cubic meter, or maybe we do, right? Turns out there is a thousand liters in one cubic meter. Okay, so now we can simplify this equation quite a bit. What do we get? Well, the thousand drops out right there. We get the liters to cancel out, and we end up with three times 10 to the four kilograms. Okay, three times 10 to the four kilograms. So what is the delta x on those posts? Delta x, we said, was the force times the initial length divided by Young's modulus times the cross-sectional area. This was equal to mg times L sub i all over Young's modulus times the area. And now, guess what? We have all those numbers, right? Mass is three times 10 to the four kilograms. Well, keep it all on SI units, so we don't have to write the units every time. G is, of course, 9.8 meters per second squared. The initial length of those legs was 0 0.8 meters. Whoops, I just said we weren't going to write the units, and then I wrote them anyway. Let's make some room here. 9.8, then we had 0 0.8 meters for the initial length. And Young's modulus for Doug Fur, if you look it up in your book, there is a table of different uh, materials. It is 1 times 10 to the 10 in proper SI units. And we said that the area uh, was 0 0.054 meters, and that thing is going to be squared. All right, so let's plug those into our calculator and see what we get. 
Okay, so if you plug those numbers into your calculator, what you should get is 0 0.008, and the uh, units are still SI, so it's meters. Now, we're forgetting one important part of this whole problem, which was there were four posts underneath the aquarium. So we have calculated delta x if it was just one post underneath the aquarium, and so you have to divide by a factor of four. So each post will contract by a delta x of 0 0.002 meters, which is 0 0.2 centimeters. All right, give that one a shot. If you have any uh, questions, come see me in my office hours. Cheers.